seeking knowledge for Muslims, especially in this society, the, society, the British society, is a must. And we should, we should be the best, we should be striving towards the, being the best of people for seeking knowledge. What, what was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu first? It was revealed, Iqra, read. The first words revealed to our Prophet were Iqra, read. The first word in the Qur'an was read. And it wasn't read the Qur'an, it wasn't read hadith, it was just read. Go out there, educate yourself. Nowadays, the Muslim society has been, it's been um, plagued with so much bad press and bad, like, like for example, there's people, the minority, who form stuff and the majority get judged for it. Nowadays, people are hearing stuff about Islam, the bad things about Islam before they even reach it, like, oh, Muslims, they're the extremists. In today's society, you see too much Muslims, the lackadaisical approach. Muslims that don't do enough for society, don't do enough for the, the uh, image of Muslims in society. It's all like weird to see how now, like, uh, especially in cultures, is all about oh, uh, he has to be an engineer or like, she has to be a doctor um, or he has to be a scientist and, and so on. In many of the discussions that we see in public discourse, there are actually sometimes Muslims we're not best equipped to, to deal with, uh, to have to engage in these types of discussions. We need to be the best of people. We need to prove to people that we're, we're not just those guys that stay in the mosque. I pray the Prophet Salah. We need to prove to them that we, we can actually be amongst the scholars. We can actually be amongst the professors of today's age. And everything, like our Islamic tradition, is just full of encouraging people to go out there to learn. So I think it's a given that education is important. And if we look at examples in the past of um, Muslims who excelled, they would excel in their Islamic education, and at the same time, they would be the best mathematicians, best uh, scientists. Because Islam has a has a full and a very long history um, of having, uh, we have scholars and education and ilm inside, um, inside our very culture. And we need, to, we need to lift the bar a bit, we need to uh, make sure that we're aiming for, we're seeking ihsan, we're seeking excellence in everything we do. But back then when the ummah was like this, people used to hear stuff about Muslims and want to meet them. It's like, wow, these Muslim guys, they're at the top. When, for example, if there was a Muslim, Arabs, Algebra, medicines, chemistry, everything. They were the top of the world for everything. We as Muslims, we need to represent the majority of us. We need to be the best of people. In general, to conduct ourselves Islamically is a form of da'wah itself. The Muslim is concerned about humanity and those people in need. Allah says in the Quran, وَتَعَوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَتَقْوَى وَلَا تَعَوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْأُدْوَانِ Help you one another in goodness and righteousness, not in sin and transgression. So what this means is that the Muslim cooperates with anyone who's doing good works in society. Whether it's working with homeless, vulnerable people, uh, whether it's working with people with disabilities and difficulties, whether there are people who are destitute, drug problems, alcohol problems, we've got to be out there engaging in society. With the philosophies of Islam, they teach you uh, maturity, they teach you respect, they teach you discipline, they teach you knowledge, they teach you passion, fairness, honesty, truthfulness. And I believe that all of these form the aspect of professionalism. As Muslims need to portray uh, the, this very same character of the Prophet وسلم, so that the non-Muslims can have a good impression of the Muslims and can actually have a good positive outlook on Islam rather than a negative one. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, to make us role models. This is what we are. We're supposed to be shuhada al nas. Okay, we are supposed to be role models for mankind. Why? Because the Prophet was a role model for us that wanted the betterment of society. This is a man upon, upon, upon us all. It's a trust from Allah upon us all. And we should endeavor to fulfill this trust. Uh, like we have a saying in Algeria. Well, uh, it's not a saying, uh, it's a proverb. And it says, uh, uh, with one hand, it can't clap by itself. So therefore meaning that uh, it's all about teamwork and group work. So if we work as a group, uh, uh, then it's easy, yeah, then we can clap. <laughs> it's important to realize as well that whilst it's important to have sheikhs and become uh, knowledgeable in Islam, it's also important to build an educational um, platform for yourself as well. Like the, need, the needs for uh, doctors, businessmen, lawyers, um, politicians, those all um, are important as well to Muslims.
especially in this society. So, so if all the Muslims are engineers, Muslims and doctors, um, and like all this like really really popular uh, like, uh, like careers, so like uh, who's gonna be in the fields of media? Uh, who's gonna be in the fields of IT? Let it be done for this world, but let, let it be done for the Akhira. You should learn both. You should concentrate, but you should hold your own for the Akhira, the Deen, and your right hand. And the other one, your left hand. You should hold fast unto both. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Fatir, Innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al ulama. Indeed, it is the scholars who truly fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But do not be deceived into thinking that this ayah, this verse is simply speaking about the scholars in terms of the Islamic sciences but rather it is an open ayah speaking about those who know Allah Ta'ala through the Aqeedah, through the Quran and the Sunnah and also through the worldly science that Allah has endowed this universe with. There has to be a balance of everything and it's why, I mean as Muslims, it's important uh, to study something that uh, like it comes from yourself so so that passion arises with education it is a burden it is difficult it is challenging but you have to question it as to why is it there what's the purpose of it what what how can we benefit from it getting into further education is that it can only benefit the future generations and the current generations and the whole reputation for Muslims if you have a lot of teachers scientists mathematicians it can only benefit the Ummah in general and take away the sort of reputation about us being terrorists. So, you, so the benefits of education is that inshallah you can go on to become productive, uh, you know, help your family, help your children, help your parents. And it's not just about finance, it's about your, your mind as well. It opens your mind up. You have a different way of thinking. You can see uh, things that other people can't see. You can think outside the box as they say. I think education is really important in a community in order to help the mud ones in general and also to eradicate um, things like ignorance within the community. Also in terms of Islamic education, I think it's very important that if, uh, if we could, we're to give da'wah, if we're to convey Islam to other non-Muslims that we understand our religion properly ourselves um, through being educated in the Quran and the Sunnah and thus we can portray it properly. Um, if that was not the case, then others are unlikely to believe us if we lack knowledge ourselves of our religion and non-Muslims for example are far more likely to accept our religion if uh, we have that knowledge ourselves in terms of our Islamic education. So open up your horizons brothers and sisters remember that the Ummah requires you not just through your knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah and as we said this is the chief of all knowledge but it requires Muslim surgeons, it requires Muslim female nurses, it requires translators. We require these things and if the Ummah does not produce the worldly scholars which the Ummah requires to fulfill its needs then collectively we are an Ummah who is sinful in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that Muslims are amongst the most socio-economically deprived here in the UK and a major thing we need to do uh, for those coming after us is really to encourage people in areas where traditionally they don't go to university. If you look at the golden era of Islam, things like education, debate and discussion, they've encouraged as opposed to um, what we have in the modern um, what, what we have in the modern Muslim world where in certain places it's um, education and progression, it's discouraged. And you know it's not something that's seen as important in a lot of Muslim areas. One thing we need to do is to encourage obviously Muslim students to excel at their subjects, not just to get to university, but actually to go to university and study subjects that maybe traditionally we wouldn't consider subjects like law. Um, going back to our discussion again, we were referring to things of jurisprudence, of, of fiqh and Islam, and how we're actually lacking this as a community. How many of, uh, alhamdulillah, we have lots of da'is, lots of imams, lots of people we would consider scholars, but actually one area that we're lacking is, is, is the area of fuqaha. Uh, how many people do we know who are actually qualified fuqaha, who've studied jurisprudence? Um, who have legal minds, uh, who understand legal reasoning. You've got to realize that ultimately, whether you're a, whether you're a male or female, you're going to have to, inshallah, support a family, be part of a family, and in that, you have to be productive. You can't be somebody who's a burden in the family. And this is something which is groomed and, and nurtured into a person, that of, of being ambitious and striving and being aspirational. 
And part of the reason, one of the things that enables this to happen is what? Is that a person recognizes that I am responsible for myself. No one else, else is going to come and save me or rescue me. I've got to do the best that I can in the situation that I am for myself and everyone else around me. And those people who are dear to me and close to me, for them as well, and for the rest of humanity. So this desire to bring about a positive environment and a positive change in our situation. Alhamdulillah, um, at Trent ISOC, we provide a platform where Muslims can further their knowledge of the Deen of Al Islam. And the ISOC actually comes in very nicely because what it means is, whilst you're at university doing your secular education, it gives you the opportunity to um, actually take that little bit of time out. You don't have to go especially to another, uh, another building or another city. Within your environment, you're able to cover both the secular and the Deen education. All those sorts of things help to help Muslim students to feel like they can be part of the university and do well in their degree and seek ihsan and excellence in their degree and at the same time aim to be the best that they can be in their Islamic education. So I think all of this is, is really um, kind of long term, it's important to think long term. Um, inshallah with uh, FOSIS and ISOC working together we uh, hope, I was going to say you guys, but we can achieve that. It's an amana for every Muslim who joins university that they should join the ISOC because the ISOC does, it benefits every single person and it gives back to the Muslim community and it helps students to, it helps students to focus on their deen and also their education and we hope that Muslims from all races, all international students also to just join the ISOC. Some of us consider it our look, it's either our education or our Islam but we should consider our education to be ibadah. For example, if we're doing something for the sake of Allah so we can further Islam in this, in this dunya, then we should accept that and make our intentions for that. Now, can you imagine our great Islamic heroes or you know, the, the amazing Islamic role models that we've had in the past who left their legacy and left such a, an amazing legacy for all of humanity, changed the face of the earth? You know, obviously whether it's the Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdiin or whether it's the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, or whether it's all of the Imams or the great thinkers and the great, uh, like I said, philanthropists and, 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 and Islamic heroes that we've had, whether it's Malcolm X, whether it's Muhammad Ali. Imagine they thought, let's, let, imagine they had this attitude, I'm just going to do the bare minimum. I'm not going to even bother. Imagine that they didn't have aspirations. Imagine they had this idea that, you know, I'll just do what most people feel is acceptable. I'll be an average person. Would they have left their mark? And would they have changed the face of the earth? And would they have been role models and heroes that, uh, you know, transcend all people, all races, all cultures, all faiths? You look at Malcolm X, Rahimullah, for example. You know, he's a person who had a personal ambition to change the world, to establish social justice for people in his country who were oppressed. And he self-educated himself, even though he was not university educated, he taught in some of the most prestigious universities of the world because he had this personal ambition, not to be good, excellent, but to be outstanding, to strive for ihsan. And even the Prophet ﷺ has told us, strive to be people of excellence. This isn't to say that there are no fit and there are no tests involved, but the yardstick and the tool in this particular aspect is when Allah says fear Allah as much as you can make that the slogan in your life but and then yeah so it's easy for us to achieve that goal and inshallah that goal for all of us brothers and sisters uh, is a jannat al firdaus inshallah and inshallah Allah bless you good night that's it <laughs> والأحد العظيم والمتين وإنه الحق العلي الأعلى المتعالي